the not too distant future Next Sunday AD There was a guy named Joel Not too different from you or me He worked at Gizmonic Institute Just another face in a red jumpsuit He did a good job cleaning up the place But his bosses didn't like him So they shot him in the space Even my joke can't control where the movies begin or end Because he used those special parts to make his robot friends Robot, we call Cabot Gypsy, Tom Servo I was spotted on my way down here. Did you wear your disguise? I was wearing my disguise, but I'm just not very good in heels. No one must know we're down here doing this. I'm sorry. Well, it's time to call Joel about the experiment. Come in, Jolie Poly puddin' in pie. Hey, sirs, I'm ready for this week's invention exchange. Check this thing out. I just made it. It's the world's only electric bagpipes, all right? <laughs> And uh, the robots have, uh, have worked up a special cover version of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love. You ready, guys? Ready. Two, Racket. three, she's got a whole lot of love. What, what a whole lot, lot of love. love. She's she got, got a whole lot, lot of love. A really whole lot of love. I love it. Oh. Look, Larry's corneas are bleeding. Oh. oh. Well, it's time we sent you our experimental nugget this week, Joe. Now, human underarm perspiration is something that happens to everyone after they go through puberty, which I assume includes you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you saw a dog sweat? Larry? Never. Exactly. And why is that? Dogs don't sweat. That's exactly. why. Exactly. Because of the dog's pineal gland, nature's own canine antiperspirant. Now, you take the pineal gland and you make a serum. You get a dog, it doesn't matter what kind of dog, and you inject that serum into a human subject. In this case, Larry. Now, let's see, it's so hard to find a spot I haven't hit. Uh, what's this flower, and who's Roseanne? Oh, just stick it, will you? Ceylon Silverbird. Don't. Now, Jeez. instantly, the serum races through the bloodstream like a Porsche Targa 911 commandeering each pore, slamming it shut like the vault at your favorite savings and loan. And, checking the wetness sensors, we see that they are free from wetness and or odor. <laughs> antidote. Oh, yes, the antidote. antidote. There you go, the antidote, and here is your treat. Oh, brother. That was pathetic. Ew. Hey, no, I thought that was really good, you guys. You're doing really well, and I think that someday you'll be ready for the Nobel Prize. Maybe for fiction. <laughs> hey, hey, I noticed you moved. You guys must have got kicked out of uh, Gizmonic Institute for shooting us into space like this, I bet. Oh, don't be ridiculous. We moved. It's, it's our grand reopening. Uh, welcome to Deep 13. Deep 13? Wait a minute, that's in the sub-basement of Gizmonic Institute. I had to clean up a flubber spill once there. It's incredibly radioactive. But it hasn't affected our brain any. We like it here. Now we're even closer to the atomic pile. And one day... Well, I suppose it's time for you guys to start experimenting on us again. I'll tell you when it's time to do the movie, you squinty-eyed space chimp. Oh, uh, Clay? What? <laughs> it is time. Oh. Yeah, nice knew, insult, though. I knew that. Thank you. 
Well, it's a real stink burger of a film this week, Joel. It's called The Crawling Eye. Oh, it's, it's got a bad audio track, it's in black and white, and worst of all, it stars Forrest Tucker. Hmm, good name, bad actor. <laughs> I'll put in the tape. <laughs> <laughs> This must be a Paramount picture. Pardon me. Yep. Doing it's a beautiful there. mountain. Hey, Jimmy! Hang on a minute. Come see. Hey, oh, Jimmy! Jimmy. Quit, cool. quit shouting. You say? I tell you it's foggy. Loud or it's a mountain. It's supposed to be cold. Hey, wait a minute. Someone That's coming. a bad Cary Grant Who is it, there, Jim? It? The abominable snowman? I tell you there's someone coming. The abominable can't see a thing. Funny. <laughs> oh, very good one. <laughs> Going down. Well, let me help you there. Mountain flossing really repels me. Can you see him? Not yet. He's just below the lip. Oh, he got that hat from Mike Nesmith. Here he is, Jim. No! Come on! Come on! Oh, idiot, we nearly had him. Why did you let him go? Didn't you see What him? are you talking about? His head! It was torn off! You say that like it's a bad thing. The Crawling Eye. Starring... Should be the crawling me. Oh, Forrest Tucker, he was from F Troop. Hey, Joe, how are you supposed to read these titles? Oh, well, uh, Crow, it's simple. You see the uh, line up there? Uh-huh. That's, uh, see, there's one there. See? Oh. You follow the line and it shows you right what to look at. We are here. Yeah. They quit doing it because people started figuring it out. Kind of like titles with idiot clips. Yeah. Whoa. Duncan Sutherland. Duncan, what a yo-yo. <laughs> Good one, Tom. <laughs> Thank you so much. There are the men responsible. Directed by us. Tempion. The light at the end of the credits. Let's see, Gemini, Gemini, you'll be attracted to a crawling eye. Leo's figure prominently. Hmm. Oh, were you dreaming? No, I don't think so. Why? You're talking in your sleep. I give away any secrets. Just that you're a man. Not really. I didn't quite catch his last name. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Oh, thank you. You sure you feel all right? What a babe. Oh, I feel wonderful. I wish everybody would stop treating me like an invalid. How about a wheelchair? Look, Anne, there are the mountains. Ooh. Mm. I am Mount Svengali. You will do as I say. Hey, my paper! What the? Hey, dibs, dibs. Everything on my lap, I get. What happened to that? Nothing? Now, don't worry. It's all right. Is there anything I can do? You're Sergeant O'Rourke from F Troop. Oh, uh, 
My name is Alan Brooks. Oh. Well, I'm Anne Pilgrim. This is my sister, Sarah. Hello. Billy. How do you do? Uh, there we are. Your paper's shot. I'm sorry about your newspaper, Mr. Brooks. Oh, that's all right. I've got the baseball scores. It's there just a are. prop, anyway. Thought that'll bring the color back. It's a red dye number seven. Like you might do with one. Okay. I could help. You have far to go? Geneva. Oh, it's Quite a big run. convention town, Trollenberg. isn't it? Next, Trollenberg. Trollenberg? Yes, Trollenberg. Sarah, we're getting off at Trollenberg. That's my stop. What's the matter, and You know we have to go on to Geneva. No, I really can't go any further today. We can stop at the Hotel Europa. What's the Europa? We've never been to this place. How do you know about the Hotel Europa? What's got into you? We're getting off at Trollenberg. Please, Sarah. Don't argue with me. Trollenberg, home of the crawling eye. All stops lead to a bloody death. It's Mr. Haney. Oh, Hebrook. I'm sorry, I'm late. Did you have a nice trip, Hebrook? Herr Klein, nice to see you again. Oh, I'd like you to meet uh, Miss Anne and Sarah Pilgrim. They'll That's drink right. anything. Prior to the Hotel Europa. I wonder if maybe you could help us out. These uh, young ladies have arrived without any reservations. Thought perhaps you could put them up. Yes, sir. Yes, it will be all right. Good. Thank you very much. The car's outside. Very good of you to put us up at such short notice. Well, uh, this is not yet our season, you understand? Oh, I thought now would have been about your busiest time. Well, normally, yes, but, uh... We've been having trouble with the crawling eye. Is, uh, is Hans still working for you? Yes, sir. Hans is still working, Professor Brooks. Thank good. you. Cigarette, sir? No, thank you. Hey, look, you guys. They're being uh, followed by a movie. No, thank you. How about you, Eric Klein? Thank you, I don't smoke. They shouldn't have started to climb. What are you talking about? An accident. Last week, 1,200 feet up the South Col. Three English students, one of them was killed. Was there an accident, Mr. Klein? On a mountain? Uh, these things sometimes happen. What else do you know about the Trollenberg? Peasants are leaving the mountain. They say it's bad luck. The mountain people are very simple. They are superstitious. Oh, all these stories are nonsense. What stories? Nonsense stories. Disappearing into the mist and never seen again. She is informed. When in Switzerland, visit Trollenberg. It's really picturesque. What's that supposed to mean? It means the babes are coming. Oh. There they are. Hello. You must be Mr. Brooks. Klein told us you were coming. My name's Truscott, Philip Truscott. How are you, Mr. Truscott? Klein, you didn't tell us we were expecting other guests. Oh, this is Miss Sarah Pilgrim and Miss Anne Pilgrim. Anne Pilgrim. They'll drink anything. Sarah and Anne Pilgrim. So oh, we've met before. The name rings a bell. Does it? Would you mind if we went up to our rooms now? These aren't my clothes. I don't look good in stripes at all. She could eat corn on the cob through a picket oh, fence. Uh, observatory at the foot of the mountain. The cable car. There's a small hut the climbers use. You can see it from the observatory. It's all there. Just like, just like what? Hmm. Well, just like. Sarah, why did I want to come here? What is there about this place? Why do I feel I've seen it all before? Don't worry about it, darling. 
Lots of people get a feeling like that. Perhaps you read about it in a book, or saw a picture in a travel folder. You mustn't let it upset you. No, I mustn't. If you're right, I probably read about it. In the script. Spot this, isn't it? Certainly is. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes, once, a couple of years ago. Good climbing. So they tell me. Don't you climb? Not if I can help it. Must be his overnight gun. It's come for holiday. You don't climb. Yes. Oh, this old thing? Saved my life once. <laughs> Taxi, those two girls, aren't they? Certainly are. Pilgrim, sister. Sarah, ma'am. Of course, I knew I'd seen him before somewhere. On the Palladium, about a month ago. They're a mind-reading act. <laughs> Funny they didn't say anything. Well, perhaps they, uh, they wanted some privacy. Just like me. Can I buy you a drink, please? All right. Good. He knows how to take a hint. He's kind of testy. Uh, give me Zurich 6468, will you? Uh -huh. Yes, I, I want you to check on someone for me. Hello, Alan Brooks. Alan Brooks, I think. I'm talking about it. He's American. He's about 40, I think. Was he on his trip? Well, I should try New York first, and then Los Angeles, and then Washington. All right. Okay. Gotta go now. Right. Hello there. You'll be Brooks. If you want right. me to. I'm Jill Huff. This is Brett. We're the Hat How Brothers. You do? We do. Looks like you're going for a climb. Yes, we're going up the Trollenberg. Can I have a noggin before we start? Care to join us? All right. What's it going to be? Scotch, please. Scotch and a cool bandit. Better Nothing like a, a little drinking and climbing. Keep the cold out tonight. You, uh, you're gonna stay tonight? No, there's a hut at the foot of the South Col. We'll sleep there tonight and attack the mountain proper tomorrow. Unless it attacks us first. Hello, Truscott. Who's the tomato? You must be Miss Pilgrim. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Durst, sir. And Mr. Brett. Brett, yes. Oh, to care for a drink, I appear to be in the chair. Which is one way out. Thank you. I'll have a Campari. Truscott? Uh, scotch, please. Campari and another scotch, Hans, please. Good afternoon, sir. Her sister's here with you, isn't she? Klein told us. Yes. Would she care to join us? Perhaps oh, we can... No, sir. Quite an occasion for me. My first time up a mountain. Oh. Aren't you kind of fat to be climbing a mountain? He's a big noise in the Alpine Club. How did you come to take up mountaineering? I want to see if we can't find some good reason for all these accidents. I'm a geologist. I know all about rock formation and that sort of thing. Oh, here we are. Cheers. Good luck. A good climb. Keep an eye on your roping, won't you? Huh? Why roping, particularly? I don't know. That's not sweet. That's right. Nasty business. Chill out. Very nasty. Nasty, what nasty. That? Some kids climbing on the South Col, and one of them fell. They shouldn't have been climbing without a guide. Or shoes. Seems he wasn't roped up correctly, and the rope got caught up around his neck. Strangling? Worse than that. Killed him. Tore his head off. Even then it worse. strangled him. He didn't have the half of it. It was the fall that killed him. Tell them what the villagers him. say, huh? It's not for me. What do they say, huh? That's what they say. Well, it's not for me. The guides who found him, also his friends. They swear the rope was around his waist. You understand? It was still tied. Oh, but. How could it have, uh... The villagers had something to say about that, too. Haven't they, Hans? It was a trick knot. Excuse me. Oh, 
What do the villagers say, Tusk? They say, it's they not say for me. It they all say that. Yeah. As I said, they shouldn't allow any experienced climbers up to Trollenberg with a guy. There are bound to be accidents. Yes, you watch your ruby. We ought to be moving. We want to make the hub before nightfall. We've got a death okay. scene to make. Oh, uh, I'm going up to the observatory. I'll hitch a ride with you in the cable car. That is, unless you're going to climb the whole way. Climb the whole way? What if I can help it? <laughs> See, there are certain chemical changes that can take place inside rock, which cause a physical alteration of its structure. At times, it can become like chalk, break away in your hand. What do you think of that, Brett? Hmm? Oh, I don't think it's like that. A mountain's a mountain. Some people can climb it and some can't. Some people can speak dialogue, some can't. Those that can't shouldn't try. I'm here on the sufferance. <laughs> How long do you think it'll take you to reach the hut from the observatory? I don't know. Oh, about three and a half hours. It's an easy climb. That's good. I'm wearing a sport coat. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the observatory. Professor. Professor, how many more times do I tell you I am not to be interrupted? I'm sorry, sir, but there's someone outside to see you. I don't care. Tell him to go away. He says his name is Brooks. Tell him to. Huh? Alan Brooks? Yes, sir. Oh, bring him in, bring him in. No, wait, wait. I bring him in myself. No, nope, wait, wait. You get him. No, I'll get him. Well, yeah, I'll get him. I have to do everything around here. Alan, my dear Alan. <laughs> they all get a fact for leaving you out here. Come in, come in. Oh, it's good of you to come and see me. And on your holidays, too. I was lucky I was in Europe. You got my letter? Yes. Well, you don't say very much. What's the matter? You're not pleased to see your old friend? The gate, sir, Professor. And how are you, Alan? <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> what a goof. Well, Alan, what do you think of our little observatory? Eh? Groovy pair. You know, the government gives me as much money as I want. <laughs> Very retro. Needs some more color, though. I'll show you something. Television? Better than windows. So look. Look, the all-weather channel. These are mountains you won't see on any other station. You see? Television cameras on the roof. We watch everywhere. <laughs> you know, the government, the government, they say to me, Professor, do you have to have such expensive things? Windows are much cheaper. <laughs> and I say I have to have and I have! <laughs> you think that's funny? Uh, that over there. That Science is the only humor. Window. And even for that, we have protection. Look. Now the windows are even smaller. But I can make them big again. Could just get roller that blinds. That will stand up to any avalanche. <laughs> so that tool was very expensive. <laughs> All this to study cosmic rays. Well, Alan, come into my office, sir. Huh? Well, Alan, here we are. Same old mess, huh? But it's an expensive mess. Well, you're looking very fit. Well, I look the same as always. Come on, quit your stalling, Professor. You forget I know you. You said in your letter that it was urgent. I see you right away. What's so urgent? How long have you been here in Trollenberg, huh? Got here this morning, came right up to see you. So you haven't you tried haven't the fish heard yet? about the accidents, then? Yes, I, I heard about the students. Yeah, that was one of them, but, but there have been others, many others. Where people climb mountains, there are lots of accidents. That's true. And sometimes the bodies, they disappear. But here, the search parties go out and always they find nothing. Now, why is that? They're not good search parties? But they're expensive. I don't know. And then there is the cloud. What cloud? Come on, Alan, you know what I'm talking about. The cloud where there should be no cloud. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Where there are mountains, there are always clouds. But this one remains static. On the side of the Trollenberg, it never moves. Oh, right. A freak of nature. Hey. A radioactive freak of nature? Radioactive? Mm -hmm. Can we see it from here? Come, I'll show you.
Okay, what did you guys think of the movie so far? Well, I thought there'd be more music. You know, more of a Julie Andrews quality. Ow. Julie Andrews quality? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? Now, come on, Crow. What did you think of the movie so far? Uh, well, Joel, I can't understand why everybody's so upset about losing their heads. What's so bad about that? I've seen Servo's head on the workbench lots of times. Yeah, screws right off. It's a pop top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's not like that. It's really... Human beings are made completely different, you guys. Once our heads are separated from our bodies, that's pretty much the end of the show for us. It's just the way we're made. Can't you use your backup copy and reboot? Uh, no. Nope, nothing like that. Well, then why do people say that they're always, uh, like, I'd lose my head if it wasn't screwed on? Yeah, and people often say their heads aren't in the right places. Yeah, and Joel, once I heard the scientists talking and they said you had your head up your... Uh, well, uh, Crow, that uh -huh. is just a figure of speech, all uh -huh. right? Figure of speech? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, like the body of a paragraph, perhaps? Uh, I think that's a literary figure. Oh, maybe like Edna St. Vincent Millay? Well, now, there's a body. Now, listen, you guys. I'm trying to teach you something, all right? So, what about head games? And head trips. And how do you explain head cheese? Well, uh, head cheese, I don't explain head cheese, but uh, here are some people who do. Joel, will you carry me everywhere from now? Sure, I gotta put wheels on you sometimes. Hey, look, it's that painting we saw earlier. Adam, come here. Hey, wait for me. Hey. Keep up. You see, here, here's a map of the area. Admittedly, it's not a very good map. It's Trollenberg. Now yeah, that, that's Trollenberg. That is the scan. It's up on the roof here. Now you see, at the moment, nothing. No reaction, nothing. Now remember, here is the cloud. I turn on the scanner. So, now watch when it passes the cloud. Nope. Watch up Where's here the, the cloud? Bottom. Where's the cloud again? Uh -huh. Now you see it's past the cloud, nothing. Watch it go around again. Where's the cloud? Where is it? Ah, it's a here? cloud of baked beans, I think. Sounds like it, right, Tom? It sure does. Well, what do you think of that? Now, Alan, I ask you to think back three years ago to what happened in the Andes. But, but this can't be the same. Why not? We have the accidents like before, we have the cloud like before. Why can't it be the same? Too many things missing. Like a plot. Mental compulsion. What is it? No, the train. She, she suddenly decided she had to get off at Trollenberg. She was booked for Geneva. But she had to get off the Trollenberg. And did she? Yes. She had to. the hotel. There's climbers on the Trollenberg. Climbers? I thought they were all scared away. Where are they? 16 degrees west of June North. Hey, it's F Troop. Two thousand meters. Two guys. Hey. Captain Palmer. Isn't he Hubert. too fat to be climbing a mountain? You know that? Well, just from the hotel. They came up with me on the cable car. Well, mm. yeah. they should be all right as long as they stick to the present track. And they keep their heads on their necks. The cloud is well to the west of the path. Mm. Aaron, will you do something about what I've told you? In the cloud? Mm. Do what? Inform the authorities. Look, I'm on a holiday. Besides, you haven't told me anything that can be proved. I've told you about the clouds. I've told you about the accidents. What more do you want? Facts, proof. Scotch. Something that'll look real in black and white on the committee's desk. I don't know. I'm gonna stick my neck out again like I did in the Andes. But why? You were employed by the United Nations. It was all in the report. Look, by the time the Andes report was in, there wasn't anything left in the area, explained or otherwise. They practically accused me of dreaming the whole thing up. Well, if I was to take a hand here, I'd have to have a list of documented facts. They'd have to be pretty conclusive. Well, I look like a dork again. You're an important man. Why don't you get through the burn? Important. 
I'm only important if I say something about cosmic rays. If I say anything else, they tell me to mind my own business. Why don't they give him something maybe, to study that he can pronounce? Maybe you should speak to Klein. Or Charles Pryor. Well, he's also the mayor of Kronenberg. Perhaps he could help. Anyway, he could supply a list of the accidents. He might be more interesting. Then perhaps you do something yourself. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back at Daniel Boone's house. Damn, I'm just too fat to be climbing a mountain. <laughs> what a nice place. Gee, there's only one bed. Guess we'll have to flip for it. He's too fat to flip. Hmm, let me see. I could kill the fat guy with this. No, too flimsy. Yeah, this is it. Nice and hefty. You all right? Oh, take your pack off, man. You can't relax like that. I'll call Weight Watchers. Hello? Yes, Everett. You arrived all right. Oh, uh hello. -huh. Good. Good. A night's sleep will set you right. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, all right. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks a lot, Doc. It was a bread. They have arrived at the hut. You see, there's nothing to worry about. It is just unfortunate that this year we have had many inexperienced clients. And what about the rumors in the village? Well, you know these people, Professor? They are superstitious. They like to believe in, in the fairy stories. Gentlemen, you understand. Officially, there's nothing I can do. Except sit here and drink heavily. Dear Diary, once again the fat guy got the bed. Come back tomorrow, if we travel light. I must have a sack for rock samples. Uh, I think we can manage that. You can take this sack. Penny for your thoughts. Think we'll ever get married? The ability's not too good. A little clear. Well, up here. Oh, it's just a painting. Sorry, my mistake. Moving down from the peak. Will this do, Miss Pilgrim? Oh, this will be fine. It's quite a collection you have there. <laughs> now, would somebody bring Anne in, please? Oh, yes. <clears throat> now, you'll see that to? I make no signals to Anne and say nothing. <clears throat> so it's impossible for any sort of code to be used. <coughs> the banknote? <coughs> French? It's a banknote. 500 francs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a <coughs> number on it. Mm -hmm. H O <coughs> One, mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. eight, mm -hmm. eight. Mm -hmm. And who does it belong to, young lady? Robert. Robert. Pretty well, good. Very good. Very good. A rounded sort of object about <clears throat> the size of a tennis ball. Pinoid. Pinoid. Made of glass. Pinoid. I think it's used as a paperweight. Oh, There's a model inside it. A mountain and a little hut. And when you shake it, there's a snowstorm. When you shake it, the heads come off. Rosebud. So. Mountain. Hut. Two men in the hut. Anne. The fat one takes the bed. There's the fat one, he's asleep. But he's not the one. The other one. Sitting at the table. Dreaming. Dreaming. Doubting. Writing, Writing in his diary. He's the one. Getting up. Coming towards the door. 
Maybe she's not psychic, maybe she's controlling him. If she shuts up, maybe he'll sit down. He's opening it. It's coming out. Up the slope. Up the slope. Flash, Mr. and Mrs. America and all ships at sea. This is a banner extra, front page stuff. Girl has vision. Dude, her. she's her. mine. I'm picking her I'll get her arm. Hello? Hello, Brett. You, uh, yeah? What do you want? Are you all right? Yes, why? Is Brett there? Of course he is. Wouldn't be a wandering off in the middle of the night. Hmm? Fat, now I'm fat and awake. Keeps calling me. Thanks for calling, you jerk. Jurist! Jurist, is Brett there? Can you hear me? Jurist, are you there? Hello? Hello? I have to walk back over here. Hello? Can you order me a pizza? You're right. He's not here. He must have just gone out. I better go and look for him. No, don't do that. You'll be lost in five seconds. Just sit tight where you are. I think I should go. Maybe something wrong. No, you're not to move. Stay in the hut. What's the weather like? Not very good. Some heavy cloud coming down. Well, then stay where you are. There'll be somebody at this end of the phone all night. If Brett shows up or if you need us, bring us here, will you? All right. Bye. Bye. Well, let's see. Something to hold me over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't eat that. It'll just make me hungrier. Maybe the blanket. Let's go. Coming around, I think. It was a bizarre dream, and you were all there. Well, what happened? Don't. Fanny Flagg and Groucho and Carl Sagan, and it was a Dick Cavett PBS special. Well, we need something to relax your sister. Sedative, perhaps. You have such a thing? I may have some sleeping pills in my room. Shall I see if I can find them? Oh, please. Thank you. Sarah, could I speak with you for a minute, please? All right. What's that? What's that noise? I think someone's sharpening a pencil or something. I think it's the electric blanket. No, Miss Sarah, I don't want you to upset yourself. Are these any good? He prescribed those for Elvis. Yes, that's fine. Now you give her two of these, then come downstairs, please, sir. All right. Is it my breath? My pizza ready? It's been over a half hour. It's funny as hell outside anyway. I can't see far. Perishing cold too. Yes. Yes. Hold on a minute. There's someone outside. Hang on. Maybe it's the neighbor kids. Could be the pizza man. Hey, get out of my flowers. It's the stealth pizza man. Fred? Fred, is that you? False alarm, I guess. Hang on a minute, I'm just going to close the door. It's the noise. Do we ever get to see the monster, Joel? Can you hear me? Anchovies. Huh? He said anchovies. Oh, has gone dead. 
that one has them. Hello? Are you speaking? Yes? It's Harpo. I see. Hmm? All right. All right. He said anchovies. What's the observatory? The cloud has moved away from the hut. Back up to Trollenberg. Oh, hey, nice. nice. Real change. You think this outfit is too busy? Yeah. We better stop now. It will be light soon. That's right. Yeah. I thought the locals were afraid of going up that mountain. They are afraid. There's an unwritten law here. Time like this, they, they go up no matter what. Even without pants. I have called a spotter plane, but it will not be up till morning. We will be well on our way by then. Ready? All right, Herr Klein. Good. Should I have my glasses on or off for this car? Look after yourself, Herr Klein. Don't worry. I'll stop by the observatory on the way down. Good. Be careful, everybody. Don't lose your heads. These four brave men. Oh. Three brave men. Oh. Uh, two brave men soon to go down in the annals of history. Look at that staircase. Would you look at that staircase? Wow, what a staircase. Man, what a staircase. Boy, I'm getting winded. How about you, Forrest? Oh, yeah. Hey, what quick staircase. Now. What is that? Got enough left for this staircase. Whoa. Watch your step. Why did they bring so much licorice? Uh, hey, uh, she's chasing rabbits in her sleep. Here they come. Thumper, they come. Fluffy, Bugs. Man. Rico, Youngblood. I'm climbing the ledge. They'll be here soon. They'll be at the hut. Keep them away. Keep them away from the hut. Away from the hut. Away from the hut. And Starsky. Hut, hut, hut one, hut two. Poor cookie kid. Maybe she shouldn't sleep so much. Professor, what's the matter? Why does she behave like this? She's a method actor. Well, well, it's like a radio receiver. You see, your sister's mind is capable of receiving signals sent out by other minds. By yours, for example. Let's start with a simple test. Now, Can you tell where I'm looking right now? now? There is a stronger signal, I think. A stronger mind. It's channeling the wavelength. Is she AM or FM? But who is it? Well, we shall know more about that, I think, when they reach the hut. In the meantime, I say to you again, get your sister out of here before it is too late. Too late for what? Last call? Take out? Too late for heroes? Tell me. Uh, it's time I was getting back to the observatory. Too late for what, Professor? Last call? Tell me. You're keeping this from me. When they reach the hut, then we will know for sure, I think. Ah. The door is locked from the inside. They must be there. Mr. Brett! Mr. Chewhurst! Just locked in through the window. The place seems deserted. Hey, a doorknob. Can I keep it? Philip. Come here. Go. Oh. Ow. These blankets. Frozen stiff. He must have slept with his hand in lukewarm water. Where are they? That doll is odd on the inside. Yeah. Brooks! Pants with the legs still in them. Who's the best guy? Careful not to pull too hard, his head might be caught on something. He's oh, huge! Yuck. His head's been torn off. Ripped off. And we're leaving here today. No, Sarah. Frank, why not? Look after last night. I just Surely. want to stay here, that's all. We haven't tried the fish yet. Now, Anne, I really mean this. We're leaving Trollenberg today. All right? You're thinking of a color. Right. There's someone in the room named Bob. Shut up. Don't you worry Two superpowers you will unite to fight a third. Stop it. 
Two brothers will reach the Senate. One will become president. Both will die. Shh. Hush. Can I have that toast? Are you going to eat that toast? The mad painting is calling you. Go to the window. Go to the closet. Unpack your clothes. Open your suitcase. Take out a foundation garment. Cut to another scene. Different case. You guys take the torso. Oh, you know, carry me. Okay. Buddy. I'm getting out of here. Don't go everywhere. Yeah, but that is an experienced climber, so we can only assume that he's hurt. They all have their first orders on a spotter plane to be here any minute. No, not a question. He's not going to like this. And I'm not going to tell him. You tell him. Well, maybe he won't notice. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, Kamba, could you speed this up a little bit? Uh-oh. Oh, he's here. Oh. Uh, Joel, I don't want to be uh, a teacher's pet or anything, but Gypsy uncoiled herself yeah, again. Yeah, she did. Kamba, could you widen Jeez. it out so everybody can see this? Gypsy, I know you're in here. Quit hiding. You clown, get out here. Oh. oh, let's do that thing we did, okay? All right. It's too bad Gypsy's not here, huh? Yeah. 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 It's too bad she's going to miss out on those piping hot ram chips. Mm. Too bad. Ram chips? Oh, all right. I knew you were around here somewhere. Listen, you know you're not supposed to come out without using the service portal. Now, look, I want to show you this. See this big mess you got oh. all over the place? That's, oh, hey, this is... This is how you look, okay? Now, otherwise, we're going to have exoservice spinal bundle all over the place. What? The black stuff. Oh. Hey, Joel. What's that? I got an itch. Oh, oh terrific. wonderful. She's terrific. She's got an itch. Okay. Happy day. Uh, okay, where is it, Gypsy? Vertebrae 6805 through 7219. Vertebrae 6905 through 7018. Okay, you guys, start scratching. Where's my rake? Whoa! Oh, oh, I hate it when she gets right. diode rash. Oh, oh. Me too. Oh, oh. Uh, Tom Servo, I think uh, you're scratching on the solar collector cable. Oh, great. So am I. Wait a minute hey, now. Here, okay. Why am I doing this? I hate being the end man. I scratch here and it takes her six hours to feel it in her head. I know what you mean. Uh, Joel, yeah? uh, oh, I don't want to ask a stupid question, but why'd you make her so big? Well, you know how it's, it's kind of like when you start connecting uh, paper clips together, you get hooked on it. It's kind of oh, yeah. like that. Uh, oh, my. What's that, Tom? Uh, Joel, you remember when we were speculating on her sex? Yeah. Well, I think I may have narrowed it down here. Oh, yeah? Oh, 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 check that. <laughs> Sorry, oh, false alarm. wait a alarm. minute. Here's the, um, I think I found the problem. She's jammed in here behind the door. Hey, don't open that door, McGee. <laughs> Happens every time. We got Ooh, movie oh! sign! I feel safe in your arms, Joel. Plane to party. Plane to party. Are you receiving me? Party here. Pick up some ice and some cubes. Plane receiving you loud and clear. Get some paper cups. What is your position? Our position, map reference, 265 in Over. Can't miss a Dave's van's parked right out in front. Roger, party. I can see you now. I shall fly north for five miles. For no apparent uh, reason. West for five miles, then south. Uh huh. I shall cover this. We'll be back in the exact front. same spot. Roger, plane. What the? She didn't make her bed again. She's... 
her nightgown? She's not in there. She's been digging through my stuff. Let's see. She went to the closet. Okay, she took my stuff. Then she must have gone to the window. I didn't know they had cable. The hills are alive and it's getting scary. That cloud over there wasn't there before. Hello. 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 I want to speak to the observatory. Professor Corvette. The plane. The plane. Don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. If I concentrate, I won't crash. Let's see, let's find a flat spot here. Whoa, here's the party. Hello, party. This is the plane. I spotted him. I spotted him. He's approximately half a mile due north of your position. About the north face. Roger, plane. Big part for him. Look out for the mountain. Hi, I'm the curator of the matte painting. Mr. Stilgen, my name's Wilde. Professor Krevitz sent me to bring you to the observatory. But I'm not to go to the observatory. Well, there's nowhere else to go up here. And it's only a couple of hundred yards. I'm to go up the mountain. I don't think so, Mr. Stilgen. I think you ought to wait a while at the observatory. What color is the sky in your world? Just about, almost, almost, uh, 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 uh. I'll be coming next day. What? He said, here's a bloody bag. I better have a look, see. <coughs> Echo. Need to shave. What? Pudding? Maybe it's somebody's lunch. Hey, come and see here, Schnell. Come and see here, Schnell. <laughs> all right, it's all right. They found Hoffa. You looked in my bag! Hey, buddy, it won't get better if you pick at it. Uh, yeah, your friend, I got a bone to pick with you, too. Because you want to look in my bag, too! And it's yours. That's got to hurt. Please, please, please. Oh, how about that? Negative. Hugo? Negative. Swing another 30 degrees. Negative. Everybody's so negative. Negative. Try the other circuit. Oh, wait. Switch back to the first circuit and reverse the scan. No. This will never replace Nintendo. Now's my chance to beat it. I hope I don't run into Forrest Tucker. Huh? Oh, hello, Ryan. What are you doing up there? Uh, uh, nothing. Go. Probably you waiting for the commercial. Go? Go where? The Tornberg. I must go now. Delta, Delta, Delta. Don't worry. Come on. Oh, good. Alan, I want to speak with you. Yeah, I got news for you, too. Hans, when's the next cable car go down the mountain? It shouldn't be long, sir. Good, I, I want you to take Anne down. Don't let her out of your sight. Anne, I want you to go with Hans. He's a warm and wonderful care. man. You'll be very happy. Groping, Hans. Hey, everybody, I got a girl. They make a lovely couple, don't they? Been to the hut. And? Doors is dead. Brett's missing. <sighs> Not that I'm surprised, mind you. But the cloud has started moving again. What cloud? Bozo the cloud. Oh, I don't think you'd understand, Philip. 
You're much too stupid. I got time in the end, is Julian. Hmm? How'd no. you know about that? So I get around. All right. I'm a newspaper man. It's my job to know about these things. Oh. I see. I chased that story when we got a wind of your report, Alan. When I got there, it was too late. Looks as if I'm going to be more fortunate this time, isn't it? Yeah, fine, fine. That's that's just what we need. I haven't answered my question, Professor. What question? Is this the same as it was then? Well, that was then, and this is now. So what happens now? This. The United Nations have a special team for investigating phenomena. I call them in. They also double as our softball team. The theory that you put forward last time still hold, Professor. What theory? Visitors from out of space, that was it, wasn't it? Well, what else? Well, what are they? What do they want? Look, Phil. The there fish. are many galaxies besides ours. Now, who knows what is happening millions of miles out in space? Sagan knows. Perhaps the world that these creatures inhabit is coming to an end. Perhaps they need to find somewhere else to live. Well, why pick on us? We don't know. It's just us. Maybe it's also on Mars, Venus, Jupiter. Who can tell? Do you go along with us? Until well, so somebody comes up with a better theory. Or yes. a sitcom. Yes, I do. All right. All right, while we're theorizing, why, do you think, do they always happen to land on the top of the mountain? First the Andes and now the Trollenberg. Well, it's the atmosphere, I think. You see, it gets much thinner high up. Well, perhaps these creatures need that. The cloud would seem to indicate this, too, creating their own atmosphere. Well, if they can only exist on the top of the mountains, they're hardly likely to inherit the Earth, are they? You see, anyone can get used to anything in time. Like I, you. Now, these movements we have recorded here, each time, lower down the mountain, the climatization plan. What next, Professor? The next move is up to you, Ed. You must inform the authorities. Or the authorities. Have you seen the professor? He's in the office with Alan Brooks. They're telephoning Zilly. Any sign of Mr. Brett yet? Well, the plane spotted someone he thought was him, and two of the searchers went to meet him. The others are back. They saw nothing. Whoever was Brett, they ought to be back by now. Are you, sister? She's in her room. Good. You think she's safe from our friends up there? Well, I don't think they'll try the same thing again. The trouble is, what will they try? Wow. You all right? He looks dead on his feet. A bit tired. Otherwise, all right. Where have you been? We've had search parties out for you. I was lost. In a fog, you if you will. Back, all right? When did you see him last? Do you hurt? Yes. The last night I saw him. At the hut. Yes, at the hut. It's a bit hot in here. Pour me a drink, Clyde. Have one on me. He can't handle his liquor. How's your sister, Miss Cooper? She's all right now. Where is she? She's in here. Have a cigarette. Great, we saw how well he did with the booze. Now let's give him something that's lit. Four hundred and twenty-nine matches exactly. Exactly four hundred twenty-nine. That's a good impression, Servo. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> He's gonna light his nose. Look out! What are they gonna do next? Have him drive a forklift, you guys? Gee, glutton for punishing others. <laughs> Let's get yeah. the dog drunk next. <laughs> Pretty scary up there on your own. 
Were you all on your own? Officer, I lost you, huh? I'm sorry to be a nuisance, but Matt. Then she walked in. Ooh, he's kind of pig-headed. Oh, that's smart. Look at his head. At least he's got one. There's no blood. He's wearing Mr. Spock's jammies. Dig a little deeper. Yeah, that's a good idea. Solder him back together. Yeah. That should take care of him until the morning, I think. Good. He should be up and You're spilling liquor we'll in no time. Dr. Becker can have a look at him. Do we tell the others what he was trying to do? I don't know. Hmm. Looks great. Let's lock him in here. You, but I could use a drink. So what else is new? I think we all could use a drink. Who put this zipper in my head? Wow, what a party. I'm dead tired. A little thirsty though. I need a drink, maybe some formaldehyde. Hope they serve the dead here. Looks like Popeye. <laughs> oh. Somebody's coming down the hallway, is good. Doesn't look like anybody's in there. Uh, I'll see about that. Uh, uh, I think I'll reach through and get him, Hey, uh, uh, hey Popeye! Oh, oh. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I've got a guy's head in my hand. That's a legal submission hold. Sounds like a bad Popeye impression to me. <laughs> I think you proved your point. Dropped him like a bad habit. He's just misunderstood. Most dead people are. He'll make an excellent puppet. There's Ward Cleaver. What do you think he's gonna do with that? If I cut in? Here's Johnny. Wendy, I'm home. Pretty lady. Norman, I told you not to bother the guests. And that's for killing the fat guy. Whoa. Carries a pistol in his pajamas. What do you think that pocket's for? Hey. Kleenex? Look at this. What? I'll play the light closer. Lower. 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 Put it on the floor. Lower. Even lower. See the way the flesh reflects the light? Pretty. Almost as though it was crystallized. Like meat that's been deep frozen. I still don't understand how such a... <gasps> wow, unfortunate skin. Did we have to see that? Alan, the observatory's up been on. That cloud's moving again. 
Well, we haven't seen the monster yet. It's good to see something. It's coming. Gotta get up to the observatory. You heard what the professor said. That place is built like a fort. If we're gonna have any direct contact with these things, at least we'll have some kind of a chance up there. It's insane. We should try to get out to the valley. The road is blocked. The cloud stretches right across it. Now go out and do something irrational. Yes, yes. You, you go in the next cable car with the girls. Hey, dudes. You got everyone? Do you everyone? There are 12 left. One car's already gone up, and the other one will be down in 10 minutes. Uh, who is that? Hey. Hey, Hans, get some ice. Poor fool. All right, everybody, let's get up to the cable car as quickly as we can. We haven't got very much time. Oh, really? I thought we'd just hang around for an hour or two. Got everything up. Uh-oh. I bet they'll be back for that. I didn't know they got cable. Both channels. If we only had a ball, a small rubber ball, then we'd be fine. Wait, I think I know where we can find one. Professor, are you sure we're doing the right thing coming up to your observatory? Right or wrong, I don't know. What I do know is, it's wrong to stay down in the village. Up there we stand some chance, at least. Professor, look. On the lower slope. The cloud is moving faster. I hope they see it down there. The operator says it is five minutes now. Good. Alan. The cloud is moving pretty fast. Huh? Please, folks. I'd like for you all to be ready to load in the car as soon as it gets down. We haven't got a second to spare. Why don't you just Maybe spew out now. more obvious facts? God, at least we'd know what we were dealing with. Well, we'll know soon enough. Wow, is that tastelessly done. It's such a mishmash of styles. Kind of garish all around. Who decorated this joint? Someone with a really big butt sat there. Is that the crawling hydro? No, that's the little ball. See, now this is where your weatherizing would really pay off. They're probably losing up to 70% of their heat out that door. Stop at the hotel. Yeah, well, as long as it stays there, we're all right. That cloud lets us see where it moves. Get aboard as quickly as possible, please. That's it. Hurry along. Right. Please, ma'am. Please. My kid? Where's my kid? Of course, the child. That cloud starts to move this way before I get back. Take the car up. Do you understand? What about you? Do as you're told. I'm on the edge of my seat. He thinks that ball's one of his pupils. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, stop couldn't it, resist. you're killing me. Oh, look at that milky discharge. I think he has conjunctivitis. Now look here, you. <laughs> Give you a trim. Hey, wait, what about the ball? Hey. Tickets. Everyone? I don't need one. Forest Tucker. Oh, look, it fell off his fabric softener box. Now they gotta go back for the bear. We better get out of here. I'm out of here. I'm with a close chain. Well, we're not through yet. Oh, 
Oh, Joe, it was so horrifying. Yeah, really? You think so? So ugly, so hideous. Uh, yeah, that was some eye, wasn't it? Oh, not the eye. We're talking about Forrest Tucker. Oh, yeah, all that vitalis, those prop mm -hmm. glasses, and those heavy, dramatic pauses. I'm drained. No, you guys. No, you got it wrong, you see. The eye is what's horrible about this movie. Think about it. Otherwise, it would have been called The Crawling Forest Tucker. I guess. Joel, what's so scary about a big eye anyway? Oh, I see. Well, that's another human being thing. You know, anytime we're confronted with some uh, appendage of ours that's disconnected and free roaming, rogue, you know, genetically bloated to 10 times its normal size, we're automatically scared. Especially if they run in packs. Yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Once I got hassled by a pack of really tough pituitary glands, and you know how immature they can be. Right. I still don't see why it's so scary. You could just walk up to it and throw salt at it. Or right. just a squeeze of lemon juice. Right, I know. It's kind of a plot hole, but let's kind of look it over. You see these, okay, these giant eyes come from a world that's uh, designed for them, you know? It's co completely compatible. Like, uh, their highways are made out of nerf, and, um, Oh, uh, they don't have to take shop classes. And they only use baby shampoo? Right. Right, exactly. So anyway, they come down from this planet and they decide to land on a mountain peak. Which is really stupid, because as we all know, a giant sharp point is the uh, giant eye's natural enemy. Bingo. So anyway, they come down and uh, they fouled up their atmosphere somehow. I don't know, it's hay fever season or something. And they figure they come down to Earth, we'll have our first frost already done with. So they come down and they have no concept of anything at all, like wearing safety glasses or protective eyewear of any kind. Joel, I think we've already spent more time examining this plot than the writers ever did. Now here's something you'll really like. This Put is me. the last time. Put me down. <laughs> Fog emerges over Trollenberg. Our young group escapes. Looks like everything's free and clear now. Nothing to do but to get up the rope. Sit back and relax. Enjoy the ride. Uh-oh. Maybe we spoke too soon. Oh, now they're going to have to wait all day for that cable guy to show up. This contraption operating in extreme cold. You've worked the cable car is 30 below. Colder than that. Colder than a winch. Sure. Tell scary stories. Oh my. The cable, it will snap. Am I gonna have time to change my pants when we get there? Oh, funny, good one. Tell them all about the giant eye forest. All right, look, everybody out. We're leaving the villages out here, sir. The shots are safe and they won't get in the way. Is the radio still working? Oh, we checked it about 15 minutes ago. Oh, Helen, come here. And we are in big trouble. What now? The cloud is splitting up. Splitting up? There are four of them now. And all moving this way. Four hours? How long before they get here? An hour, maybe. We've well, we got just an hour to decide what we're going to do. We'll check that radio again. You're going to signal the authorities? You tell them what? What do you use against these things? High explosives? Bombs. Time the plane gets here, those things will be all over us. How do they drop their bombs then? They're still working, OK, sir? Good. You see that thing again? Oh. There's someone knocking at the outside door, have I? It's Bob Hope. Hey there, join me this week with Brooke Shields and Eric Estrada. Maybe he's doing a walk-on in this movie. Is that a good Bob Hope, Joe? Well, we don't make up our minds pretty soon, though. They'll be made up for us. What does he mean by that? What's the matter? What happened? He looks it's plastered. You have to take across the road. I turned the car and came back. 
You all right? Couldn't get it out at first, huh? Yeah. I'm all right, thank you. It is so hot in here. Uh-oh. Stay here with the others, Sam. You'll be all right, too. And don't Stay breathe down. on anybody. Yeah, right beneath What is it, my breath? The Surt's Encounter. Young love, first love. Wow, wow. Anne, where are you going? I'm just going to sit down in the office. All right. But how can Anne help? She doesn't know anything. Obviously. We don't know for sure that she can, but Sarah, we've got to try something. Obviously, she has some kind of contact with these Obviously. Things, whether she knows it or not. I thought perhaps with you controlling her thinking, we, well, we might be able to learn something about what we're dealing with. I suppose we could try. Maybe that's what those eyes want, is contact. It's going down all the time. It's 45 below. It's still dropping. It's a cloud location, isn't it? There is a cloud there, yes. Wait a minute. Say it. It's cold they need. They live in cold. Remember the phone wires at the hut? They're cold. And Brett complained of being hot after he was infected. Yes, he was cold. Yes, too. He complained of being supposing to... Because they were cold. cold. about him. He arrived a few moments ago. He's cold. Then he changed his mind about trying to escape. He complained of... Where is he? On the car door. He's cold. Hans is on the fritz. Where's Hans? He had Wait, a cold. He died a minute ago. He came in here. Go back, Kenny. Anne! Get your hands off me. Hey, one at a time, one at a time. No leapfrog, come on. Quit roughhousing. Everyone will get a chance. <laughs> Wait, my dear, please. Take it back. Take it back what you said about my eye. Uncle, uncle. Tickle machine, tickle machine. Hans across that must the letter tickle. opener. He's washed his hands of that. Poor devil. Wait till I get my hands on you. She'll be all right, I think. Well, better take care of him. I think you already did. Are you hurting? Bring any fish. He'll get over it. How thick are these walls? I don't know, two, three feet, maybe? Fireproof? Well, yes, they reinforce concrete against the avalanche. Good. Hugo, get on the radio. United Nations in Bern. I want to talk to Colonel Spellman. Yowza. Now that Ann can't help us anymore, there's only one thing left. What's that? What I said before. Every time we've come up against these things, there's been this intense cold. Remember you said that Brett mm -hmm. looked like he'd been in the deep freeze. Heat. That's what we've got to use. I'm going to ask for a bombing raid. You said that was impossible. Fire bombs, that's our answer. Through the band, Mr. Brooks. Got any special? Fire bombs? You just hired them. All the jars and bottles you've got. Give me six bags of onions and a giant eye chart. It's getting creepy. It's cold. <laughs> Give him a giant scissors. Maybe he'll put himself out. Well, all eyes are on the observatory now. Is there a sequel to this movie? Yes, the Iger Sanction. Oh, <laughs> oh. I went clean. Starring Burl Eyes. <laughs> right. I mean, I don't get this. What's a giant eye gonna do to you anyway? Like, pick you up and wink you to death? It's just <laughs> not gonna happen. It's not practical. Well, we're all eyewitnesses, though. Mine eyes have seen the gory. Ooh, you did it again. Ooh. <laughs> kind of a, oh well. Pretty high, bro. <laughs> well, I, I think a bit more than I would. That's the way I like them. They're fine. Very dry. Make sure you get that rag stuffed in there tight so the petrol won't leak. Yep, got it. Shaken, not stirred. Grab your attention, please. I don't want anyone to leave this corner unless I say so. Understood? What if we have to go? Get as many of these ready as you can and be Hold careful it. of them. They're dangerous. And, uh, I can tell you that help's on its way. Thank you. I can't guarantee you'll survive. Well, they seem to buy it. <laughs> Alan. Yeah? 
How am I going to use these bombs of yours? You light the rags and throw them at those things in the cloud. Then you run. Alice, come here. Is that so complicated? Look at this. Ay, 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 ay. Wow, now I know how it feels to be in a microscope. Cute little rings, don't they? Yeah. I'm going to throw a bomb at that when you watch on the screen. See what One of your movies, Forrest? Would you all go up the far end of the corner, please? Except you, you come with me. Huh? Why me? I want you to slam this door behind me. Wait for me to knock to come back in. If I don't knock, don't open it, right? R right. Okay, so if you knock, uh, I open it. All right. All right, okay. Now, if you don't knock... Wait, wait, let me get a piece of paper. Darn. <laughs> Shave and a haircut. Who is it? Oh, it's you. Get me a couple more of those bottles. I saw it on the street. Those things can really move. We really got to get a direct hitter to run them with so much flame they can't get out. And let me try it. Okay, right. but it's not that fun. Go ahead. Remember the secret knock. What knock? Wait, they are big. Uh oh. He's got a new lash on life. But he didn't knock yet. Okay, same knock deal. Rats, I missed. Yeah. Saved him in the blink of an eye. Nice stunt, though. Oh, rugged. Thanks. You all right? I feel so dirty. Thanks, Helen. Now what? I don't know. Can't go out that door again, that's for sure. It's the only way in or out of this observatory I've checked. Maybe we, we should panic. Again. Maybe we should go to a commercial? We could take cool, a short break from the tedium. I don't know. Did you guys get enough eyes? Have you seen enough horrible eyes yet? Yeah? Yeah, my eyes are burning. What are they doing now? Can't tell anymore. They block out the cameras, you see? Yeah. It's all teared up. Here I come to save the day. Charlie Roger to observatory. Charlie Roger to observatory. Receiving you loud and clear. ETA in five minutes. No need to come to the party anymore. All the cool people are dead. The plane, he says ETA in about five minutes. Good. Tell him to make a straight run over the observatory and drop his bombs in the roof. I hope he knows what he's doing. Hello, I hope you know what you're doing. How's she doing? No change. No change. Couple of bills. Went through her purse. Found my comb. That eye is lashing out at society. Taking quite a brow beating on these clouds. Hello, Charlie Roger. Stop first, take across observatory and cloud. Understand? Bomb the cloud as well. Over. Welcome, observatory. Sounds crazy to me. Bombing your cloud. Over. Do as you're told. Over. Yes, Over Cassis' movie had an eye for talent. Okay, that's it. Stop it. Joel's getting really irate. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks for everything. I can see the problem. I was on air soon enough. I spy with my little eye. You hypocrite. <laughs> Something that sounds like a gigantic eye. Long, longer, longest. Beautiful eyelashes that grab people and strangle them. That is one Eiffel Tower. Whoa! Hurts. It hurt me. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> Keep in mind, you programmed me. It's the last time I give you free will, though. That's it, after Whoa. today. Whoa! That'll make the mascara run. I'll try a high-level attack first. Here we go. I feel the need. The need for, for speed. speed. Or 
or an antidepressive. Tora, Tora, Tora. Bombs away. I bombed the ship Arizona. Where's Major Khan? So that's what it sounds like when eyes cry. And we're an eyewitness. I beat you to that one. <laughs> Guess kind of eyewitness. I blame myself. Come on, be quiet. There's a lot of destruction we should be paying attention to. Ay, ay, ay. I'd like to shake tentacles with any eye that could last through that, that's for sure. It looks like a bunch of overcooked fried eggs. Bet it smells good. I bet they don't go out for breakfast after this battle, that's for sure. Kingsford eyeballs. Edges light quick, burn clean. <laughs> I like mine mesquite grilled. He tips his wings as he flies up into the sunset. Ookie. <laughs> Ookie. There's that mountain. Oh, wow, the fellow villagers, they can go down the mountain any time they'd like. You tell yeah. the villagers to wear boots. I'm about a breath of fresh air. I don't think outside is the place to get some fresh air right now. Well, sir, doesn't look as though you'll have to worry about her any longer. No, it doesn't. Cigarette? Yes, it is. Well, Alan, for the first time in weeks, the Brunnenberg is free from class. Yes, and let's hope it stays that way. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles from my way. That's the end of the movie, everybody. And you know what that means? Yay! Ram chips and dip. Yay! And afterwards, a Borium power flush. Ooh. I'm just kidding. Yay! Okay, now you know how it works. No, no, just wait your turn. You'll get a Ram chip. Okay, Crow, you go first. Now, tell me a good thing about the movie and the bad thing, and you'll get your Ram chip. Good thing? Uh, the good thing was it wasn't longer. Okay, and the bad thing? It was this long. Okay, there's your ram chip, Pally. Okay, hey! open up. There you go. All right. Oh, How is it? Chip, Good. No, okay, no, chip. no. Wait on your ram chip, Chipsy. Okay, Tom Servo. All right. Okay, let's see. The good thing was is that we didn't have to watch them clean up the vitreous humor all over from the eyes exploding. Uh -huh. Okay, imagine. You sign up that day for Kelly Temps, Trollenberg office, of course. They give you a leaky bucket and a turkey baster, or send you up the mountain. Now you're on cleanup crew. And the bad thing? Well, the bad thing was, uh, the movie, it was ambitious, but it lacked vision. <laughs> well, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> Terrific. Okay, well, here's your ram chip, hey, pal. Thank you. Okay, okay, it's time for your ram chip, <laughs> Gypsy. All you got to do is answer the questions, and you get the ram chips, okay? All right. Tell me a good thing about the movie. Can I have a ram chip, no? <laughs> Not to, well, tell me a bad thing about the movie, Gypsy. No, oh, you don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, just answer this one question. I'll give you ram. I'll give you ram chips. Okay. Uh, what's two plus two? Richard Basehart. Oh, good one. Okay, there you go. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the end of the experiment, you guys. Hope you're happy.
Oh, I'm happy. Are you happy? Oh, I'm happy. Here, file this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you next time, Jolie Polly Pudding and Pie. <laughs>